really excited about rose hips. In August and September, while others are picking blueberries or cranberries, the fruit of one of Alaska's edible flowers is also ready for the harvest. As I walk through the woods, the leaves are beginning to turn golden, burgundy and brown, and the glorious red fruit of the wild rose dangle tantalizingly from prickly stems. Rose hips are the nutritious fruit from the wild rose. I'm Leslie Shalcross with the University of Alaska Fairbanks Cooperative Extension Service. This module provides guidelines on the use of wild roses. For information on other edible Alaskan flowers, you may want to look at Cooperative Extension's publication on edible flowers. Roses may be the world's most beloved flowers. Their fragrance and beauty certainly catch our attention, and uses have been found for blossom, fruit, and seeds. History documents many culinary uses of rose flowers. In addition to flavoring many foods, distilled fragrance from the blossoms is found in perfume, and oil from the seeds is used in skincare products. The rose fruit, or rose hips as they are known, are also eaten and are known for high levels of vitamin C. Rose hips can be used in baked goods, jellied fruit preparations, soups, tea, or eaten like a dried fruit. Archaeological evidence shows that rose hips were used prior to recorded history. In more modern times, U.S. citizens were encouraged to grow and use rose hips in their victory gardens as a source of vitamin C when citrus fruits were scarce. The nutritional content of rose hips is truly remarkable. When compared to oranges, rose hips contain between 20 to 40 percent more vitamin C, 25 percent more iron, 28 percent more calcium, and 25 times more vitamin A. This tiny fruit is also a good source of vitamin E, selenium, and B vitamins. As we've found, in other wild plants, wild rose hips are especially high in antioxidant pigments that may help the immune system and prevent cancer. The hips' bright orange and deep red colors are due to lycopene, the same pigment found in tomatoes and lutein, an antioxidant thought to protect against macular degeneration. Current research on medicinal wild plants suggests that preparations of rose hips and seeds contain phytonutrients useful for controlling pain and inflammation. Rose hips also contain about 5% by weight of pectin, well known for its thickening in jams and jellies. Less well known is that pectin is one of the soluble fibers that has recently been shown to lower cholesterol and protect against cardiovascular disease. We'd better stock up on these. Although the name rose hip is usually used to describe the fruit of wild roses, all roses produce an edible hip or fruit. Wild roses, or rosa canina varieties like the Nootka rose in Alaska, produce a small oblong or round urn-shaped hip. Commercial production of rose hip products usually relies on rosa rugosa. Hardy rosa rugosa varieties grow well in many areas of Alaska. You may be familiar one, with one that we call the Sitka rose. You'll find this rose growing in similar locations to the wild rose, as well as in home gardens. The hips look almost like a tiny apple and remind us that the roses and apples are distant cousins. As long as these plants have not been sprayed with pesticides or other chemicals, they can be eaten and used like the wild rose hips. Few research comparisons exist on the nutrient and antioxidant differences between wild and cultivated rose hips. However, it is known that rosa rugosa varieties are similar nutritionally to wild roses. It's easy to see the difference between these rose hips. This hip is from the cultivated rose variety, rosa rugosa, and here are two types of the wild rose hip. Although there are differences in the shape and size, 
all can be used in the same manner. There are differences of opinion over the ideal time for harvesting rose hips, with some references suggesting a firm hip is preferred and some suggesting that it is best to wait until after the first frost when the fruit begins to soften. The riper fruit will be sweeter, but they will also be softer and more perishable. Hips left on the bush too long will begin to shrivel and dry, with some becoming mealy and losing flavor or spoiling. An ideal hip to harvest would be brightly colored, just beginning to soften with a smooth skin. Generally, harvesting of ripe hips is done between mid-August and early winter. Exactly how you intend to use the hips may determine when it is best for you to harvest. You'll most likely find hips at various stages of ripeness. You'll be able to use any that are free of blemishes and without signs of spoilage or not too dried out. As is the rule with harvesting other plants, harvest the hips in clear, dry weather. Soggy fruits will spoil faster and require immediate processing. Today, since we're already into October, most of the hips have been exposed to a frost and sub-zero temperatures. Although many are still deep, bright red, we'll probably only have another day or two to pick. Leaving some on the bushes doesn't mean that they'll go to waste. Birds and even moose will welcome them in the winter. A final word on harvesting, watch out for the thorns. Scratched hands are no fun and the thorns can get under your nails and in your clothes as you reach for that next fat red hip. You may also want to refrain from too much tasting. The seeds have a sharp barb and little hairs that should not be swallowed and we'll show you these when we talk about preserving rose hips. Next, we'll be looking at handling rose hips and making several products. Candied rose hips, rose hip fruit leather, and rose hip puree. These recipes and information about using rose hips and rose flowers can be found in University of Alaska Fairbanks Cooperative Extension's book, Collecting and Using Alaska's Wild Berries and Other Wild Products. Whatever your intended use, be ready to process your rose hips soon after bringing them home. Remove the old dried blossom end and stems if they're still on the hip. Then rinse the hips to remove dust, dirt, and tiny bugs. At this point, they can be spread out on racks to dry or placed in a dehydrator. Depending upon the humidity, they may dry within a week on racks or within four to eight hours in a dehydrator at low temperature. Whole dry hips with seeds may be used for tea. First pulverize, and then place in water. To extract the flavor and pigment, we need to boil this for about 10 minutes. The tea will have a citrusy light flavor and a light pink color. Cleaned hips may also be kept covered in a cold refrigerator for up to a week. Rose hips may be frozen by arranging fresh hips in one layer on a cookie sheet. When these are frozen solid, we can transfer them to plastic freezer bags or freezer safe containers with lids. Properly frozen hips will keep for up to two years. Remember that research on food preservation is an ongoing process. The United States Department of Agriculture and the Cooperative Extension Service continuously apply new research findings to their recommendations for food preservation techniques. 
the guidelines in this module may be revised as additional knowledge is gained that may increase the margin of safety or improve the quality of home preserved foods. Consult your local Cooperative Extension office annually for updated information. Many people like to dry rose hips for use like raisins in baked goods or just for a nutritious snack. For these purposes, it's important to remove the seeds and hairs that we mentioned earlier. These can cause intestinal upset. They can be removed from very firm hips by slipping a small sharp blade into the blossom end of the hip and carefully putting the blade behind the seed cluster and gently pulling them forward. You can see the, the hairs. I'm going to split this hip. So we want to get rid of those hairs. And if we're lucky, we can get the blade, and it helps to have a nice, thin, sharp point, we can stick it right behind the seed sack and pull them forward, if we're lucky. Those came out pretty cleanly, but we still have a few to remove. We can use that one later for drying or for making our candied rose hips. Some feel that this process of removing seeds is easier if the hips are first frozen, although they do defrost quickly and become mushy while working with them, that may work for you. In some experimentation with the dehydrator, I was able to most easily remove seeds from very soft, ripe, wild rose hips by carefully splitting them with a very sharp knife and drying them for about two hours in the dehydrator. At that point, the seeds seem to just come right out with the little hairs attached, leaving most of the flesh behind. And we can put them back into the dehydrator and finish drying them. Once dried, store the rose hips in an airtight container. They should keep their quality for several months. If removing seeds looks a little tricky, be assured that fresher frozen hips with seeds can be juiced to make jelly or cooked briefly and pureed. The puree can be used for quick breads, cookies, soup, fruit leather, and jam. Juice can be canned or frozen for future use. However, there are no tested published times for canning rosehip puree. Puree can be frozen for longer term storage. Let's look at the steps in making puree and we'll show you how to make some kid friendly fruit leather. Our recipe for rosehip puree calls for four cups of soft, clean rose hips and two cups of water. If your hips are very ripe as these are, you may want to cover with a little bit less water so that your puree is not too runny. We'll bring this to a slow boil and simmer for about 15 minutes. Look at 
that orangey red color. I think that I'm seeing that tomato pigment lycopene again. It looks very much like tomato sauce. Next, we'll press the cooked hips through a fine sieve, or we could use a food mill. The fine sieve will remove the seeds. You may need to do this in two batches. You want to make sure that you don't put too much into your sieve because if you do, you'll spill the seeds over into your puree. I may have gotten a little too much in here. Oh, that looks nice. we've done about all we can do with this. Whoop. We'll return this to the pot for a little more cooking. This puree can be used to make jams, marmalade, such as I have here, or fruit leather, or even add additional vitamin C to other fruit products. The puree should be frozen or refrigerated for short-term storage. It should not be canned, as there are no research-based recommendations for canning. We'll be right back to show you how to make a fruit leather. Making fruit leather with a dehydrator is easy and fun. I'll use two cups of the rose hip puree, one tablespoon of lemon juice, and one tablespoon of honey. For variation, or if your rosehip puree is somewhat runny, you could combine the rosehip puree with applesauce. Other fruit purees can add flav flavor accents. I like to use a little raspberry puree for a nice tart flavor. We'll spread the puree evenly on our plastic dehydrator sheet. If you don't have a dehydrator, you can just use plastic on a baking sheet. The puree should be spread about a quarter 
to an eighth of an inch thick. We want to make sure we don't get too close to the edges. We'll just put this in our dehydrator. Here's a sheet that I started about four hours ago. And we can see that the surface is dry and a little bit shiny. And it's pulling away from the backing. And we've got rose hip leather. Wrap your fruit leather in plastic and keep it for short term storage or up to one year. That is, if you don't eat it all right away. Another favorite product of several of our extension agents is candied rose hips. This recipe does require very firm rose hips and the hips must be seeded before processing. I'm using some large rugosa rose hips for this product, but this could also be made with wild rose hips. I've seeded one and a half cups of rose hips. A sugar syrup is made with a half a cup of sugar and a quarter cup of water, and I've already gotten our syrup started. The sugar's dissolved, and we'll add the seeded hips and boil for about 10 minutes. We'll be back in 10 minutes when these are ready. Watch the hips carefully while they're cooking. If they start to fall apart, you may want to shorten the cooking time and gently remove them from the syrup with the spoon. These look just about right. We'll remove them from the syrup and place them on waxed paper to drain for a few minutes. They smell good and they look good. I can't wait till they're finished.
We'll let them drain for a minute and then we'll sprinkle them with a little bit of sugar. The sprinkled hips can be dried in the sun or in a dehydrator at around 135 to 140 degrees. Once they're finished, they can be stored between sheets of wax paper in a tightly covered container until used. The finished product which we made a few hours ago, looks like this. We hope that these ideas get you started with your own use of Alaska's wild roses and that you'll get as excited about rose hips as I am.